Hey guys, um, today I just want to show you a couple of tips when diagnosing the common Holden alloy tech timing chain issues, but particularly how to look at software, which is a free thing that anyone can do for Holdens. So I've got a Holden Commodore in with a check engine light, 2007 model, um, non-SIDI, the V6. It's got a P0008 engine precision system performance. So quite common, um, can set different codes, but quite common to be a timing chain issue. Um, it can be an issue to do with VVT or various other things that can cause this though. If this wasn't a common fault that you um, had anything to do with, you would obviously go and put the P0008 up into the search bar there. And as you can see, there's quite a few instances of that on the site and you could read through those. Um, I won't do that now, but I will tell you not all of them are timing chain related. So this isn't a slam dunk and we still need to do some diag. Um, I'm going into the known good scan and scope data now and we're gonna pick ourselves up a cam crank um, correlation just in case I wanted to use it. There's a Leo engine, whereas there's an LY7 as is fitted in mine. So I've got um, the, the correct LY7 engine and there's a cam crank if I wanted to use it. Um, we'll get back to that later on. So something else that we can do while we're on the TAP website here, just while we're getting ready to, to carry out some testing, I'm gonna go into the OEM info resource. We'll go into Holden, we'll see there's many other manufacturers. Now what this is, is a compilation that we've put together of all things that you, you may want link-wise for that manufacturer and, and tips about you know money to be paid if it was. This section is a free section um, offered by GM. And so here we can go and put a VIN number and we can get the latest calibration file number um, for all the modules on that car. If you did want to actually um, install them into the car, yes, you would have to pay a fee, which is listed back on that TATS site. I think it's around $55 per vehicle on the GMs. But in this case, you'll see here, it's told us the latest calibration number for the engine is there. And that actually um, fixes a timing change stretch check engine light. I, I say that loosely because it obviously doesn't fix the car, but we're gonna take that on board and uh, we'll move into diagnosing the car and we'll revisit this la that later. So firstly, we're gonna go in, we're gonna look at some camshaft position data, um, just very quick, easy scan tool um, diagnostics to ensure that we don't have a variable valve timing issue. I'm using the Ortel Ultra here that I've only just picked up. Um, it's been a, a great tool, really looking forward to doing more with it. Um, you'll see there that I can select to the top. So I've selected the PIDs that I want and I was able to move them to the top. Um, I've now got the car running. So we're sitting here at idle, um, some slight fluctuation of the VVT cam gears in that actual um, cam positions. But for the most part, basically the VVT is parked. Now raising the RPM here, you can see if you go through some of the commanded and the actuals, they're following very closely. So the camshafts are getting a command to go to this degrees and they're able to reach that target quite well. Um, we'll scroll down, we'll just see the last one here. So that's our bank two exhaust and that's all four cams. Um, bring that back down to idle and we'll be able to have them back at a parked position. And if we did want to carry out a cam crank correlation with a scope, um, we can be confident that in that parked position, it's gonna be the same as the others. Um, the VVT is active, but it doesn't matter because it's not moving at idle on this one. So you'll see I'm now looking at the calibration verification while we're still on the scan tool. Um, this relates back to that GM site we saw where we put the VIN in and we we're able to see the latest calibration number 92457292. Now over on the right on the scan tool looking in the vehicle, we're looking to see are we up to that number? And although we've got calibration number one, two, which relates over to, on the left, we've got the engine system, the vehicle system. I don't know which one's which, but I know that the numbers do not match and the numbers in our scan tool on our vehicle are all earlier. So that means that this hasn't had the band-aid essentially that the GM put out to um, change the parameters for when it will set correlation codes. It has not had that software update done on this vehicle. Now that is an option, but it's not one that sits very well with me if we're talking about a long lasting repair. Essentially we're um, widening the goalposts for how far we're going to allow that cam and crank to um, skew from each other. Um, obviously a better repair is to get um, the chain system fixed. But if the thing's not that far off, then it may be an option that the customer wants to take and you know we can give them that. But um, the way that we're gonna determine that is we're gonna have to go and do a cam crank correlation using a scope, but that's fine because we've got a known good from the TAT site. 
Okay guys, we're just gonna do a really quick cam crank correlation. Um, this is not intending to be an in-depth um, one. If you want that, go check out the YD25 video I've got um, on Facebook and YouTube on the TAP pages. Um, that shows in-depth doing a cam crank correlation with the Sync Calc app available on the TAT um, website. So uh, we've got our known good up the top and our suspect down the bottom. Um, we're gonna grab some rotational cursors. I'm gonna drop it on this second section of the crank. And then we just, we've told it 720 degrees of the crank now. So we then just choose a section of a cam. I don't even care if it's the intake or exhaust cam at this point really, but we'll go with this top one. We now know that it's taken that cam 586 uh, degrees of crank rotation to get to that point. So if we do the same thing on our suspect pretty close and this is the same cam up here different colors but that's okay 597.5 so give or take the things about nine degrees out So a couple of tips there guys and as you can see through the TAP website it helped us along at multiple stages so make sure you're using all those features there um, particularly looking at that OE, OE information source where you've got a lot of links there um, I've done even keep book, bookmarks anymore because it's easier just to go there and it's got all the bits that I need to go to in one place whenever I'm trying to get manufacturer specific data. Thanks.